Hey everybody, Jason Wright here with another episode of ThreatWise TV, and today we're gonna to be talking about Cisco Defense Orchestrator, or CDO. Now you may have heard of this product. You may have heard of this technology. We launched it uh, about a couple of years ago, but it hasn't done a whole lot, but I'm here to tell you that it's got a very bright future in the management of Cisco security technologies. And so to talk more about that, I have brought in Scott Bauer, longtime friend, longtime guest, repeat guest. Thanks Good for coming back, again. man. So what is Cisco Defense Orchestrator in a so, nutshell? In a nutshell, it's Cisco's cloud-based management infrastructure for our security products. Cloud-based management infrastructure. Love everything about that. Yep. Everything about it sounds golden. Uh, we are managing what devices particularly right now? Today we're actually managing the ASA family as well as some functionality around Umbrella. But right. today we're really gonna talk around about is the ASA product line. Today we're gonna focus on ASA, but as I mentioned, there's a, a bright future for this technology exactly. in, in the future of management of other security technologies, and we can guess which ones those might be, <laughs> probably, by which ones we're talking about today. So talking about ASA today, so what kind of things are we able to do? Is this a full blasted management console? Is there is there uh, uh, things like policies and objects and devices. Yeah. Is that what we're going to talk about today? Lions, tigers, and bears. I love them all. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so CDO, the first thing we do is we're going to log in and we get our main dashboard. All right. And what's really cool about this is it gives us some guided workflow. So if you're brand new to the system and you've never used it before, you can follow these menu items on the right-hand side and go in there and actually do things with your Layer 3 ACLs or look at your Layer 7 policies if the product for Firepower Services is enabled. So you actually can go use the guided workflows on the right-hand side. Okay. But today we're just going to walk through some of those features and some of the functions of CDO specific to ASA. We're not going to follow the guided menus today. All right. Off the beaten path. Off the beaten path. So one of the first things that any firewall administrator wants to do is when they want to get in, they want to see their access control policies. Sure. It's basically what a firewall does. It really either allows or blocks traffic based on some set of parameters. Mm -hmm. So in here we have a consolidated view across all of my ACLs or all my access policies across all of my ASAs. Okay. It could be thousands of them. So if I look in here, maybe I'm having an issue with my point of sale. So if I click on point of sale from an ACL point of view, I get the actual lines for that. If I permit TCP, auditor site, permit IP, et cetera. Now I can go in there and edit it if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I can add, I can change, et cetera, and then push that back to the actual ASAs that run or use this ACL or access control policy. So full policy control for the ASAs. Okay, yep. love that. Pretty cool, huh? So one of the things that we do in access control policies is we are a heavy user of objects. Right? No one likes to remember an IP address. No one likes to remember the things that computers are really good at. All the random things that we may set we, a policy We want to use English-based objects to actually define the things I want to actually control. Okay. So the second thing I want to take a look at is my objects. So if I go down here, here this could be thousands and thousands of objects. All the objects that I, that I have discovered based on the onboarding of all my ASAs get all populated into this interface. Okay. So in here you have the different objects, you have the ability to see which devices are running that object. The number you see there are the ones that run the object and it's shared. So if I go into one of these, you get the definition. So if on the right hand side, I know it's running in Richmond and it's really controlling the inside access in. But if I click on edit, I get into and actually look at the objects and its definition. Pretty straightforward. Okay. But I manage it in one place and then I can reuse that across all of my ASAs in my, in my environment. Alrighty, love that. So, but now that we have the objects, we've made sure that we think they're doing what we expect them to do. What's this big red number up here? Well, those are some things that I should be concerned about as an administrator. So I had the capability of looking at unused objects. I can see things like duplicate objects that are doing the same thing but different object names. Okay. All right? And then I have inconsistency. So I need to clean this stuff up because my, my configuration rules are a bit out of whack here. Based on this, so this is like firewall hygiene almost, right? Exactly, okay. exactly. Firewalls over time get more and more bloated, there's more rules. Yes. One administrator creates a rule, then he's no longer with the company, he goes someplace else, but no one wants to touch that rule. Because it's there for, cards. but it's there for a reason, right? It's right. there for a reason. Wouldn't it be nice if I can show you all the rules that were not used, okay? Or all the objects that have duplicates, etc. So let's look at the unused one first. So my, with my filter, I'm going to go and click on unused, and here are all of the objects that have been defined that have never been used in a policy. Okay. All right. So these so, are just not touched. Not. It's wasted space in the config. It's wasted mm -hmm. complexity in the config. There's no reason to have them in there. Gotcha. 
So I can go into any one of these and actually remove it if I wanted to, or I can edit it. Many customers are actually go through this, they do one or two of the manual process like I showed you, but many of our customers will go in and say, you know, show me all my unused, then click on all of them, and then just remove all the unused objects. Okay, very straightforward. Very straightforward. Helps me keep my, my configurations nice and clean. Excellent. Now that the objects are done, let's go back and take a look at some of the access policies. Because we kind of jumped through that the access policy I created was actually accurate. So mm -hmm. let's do something similar to what we just did with unused objects. But let's try to find some unused policies. Okay. So if I go back to my policies again, we have the number three sitting up there. Red being bad, right? Red's something i got to take a look at. Danger. But I'm going to scroll down. Yeah, danger, Will Robinson. <laughs> so if I scroll down a little bit, we see these kind of half moons. Yeah. And this is what we call shadow or shadowed objects okay. or shadowed policies. Sounds exotic. <laughs> okay. So if I go in here and I select this shadowed policy, it's running in Dayton right now. If I select that, here are all of the access policies that Dayton is running. Here's my shadowed policy. But if I select that, it calls out which policy is shadowing that. What is keeping that one from being executed? So if you see here, I have a deny IP to a CIDR range, mm -hmm. 56.0, but then right underneath it, the one that's being shadowed is a unique or discrete policy on that host. But that would never get hit because you already said to deny the entire range. So that's what we're talking about, is a superset of but, a rule that's cre keeping it from being activated exactly, or used. Exactly, exactly. Okay. But how would you know this if we didn't give you this, this information? Yeah. Right? You have a lot of stuff out there that's not even being used. Now the question is, is that a rule that doesn't need to be there anymore? Or worse, maybe that rule is just in the wrong order. Mm -hmm. Maybe that rule needs to be above the deny, so I'm allowing that one host, but then denying the rest in that, in that CIDR range. Right. But this will highlight inconsistencies and possible problems with your actual policy. Exactly. Or your exactly. objects. So yep. we're doing kind of auditing and, and cleanup of existing policies and objects. Exactly. Right. exactly. All right. That's, that's an, kind of an advantage over what most management consoles do, which is all about correlating events and looking at how things happen that way. But here we're actually helping administrators get through the complexity of having those thousands of rules that are in there and not wanting to touch the house of cards. So that's a beautiful thing. Yep. All right. Excellent. So the last headache, not the last, but one of the headaches on our, our uh, administrator's mind is how do we keep all our boxes at the right operating system level? How version do I do control. upgrade? Version control, right? Yeah, yeah. So when we're in a lab area or setting up our network, to do upgrades, I have to install or put up a TFTP server or an FTP server. I got to change my firewall rules to allow access. Yeah. And I can tell by the look, right? That's not a fun thing to do. <laughs> I don't want to deal with all that management. So what I can do now with CDO is I can go back over to my devices and I can filter my devices by version. So I'm running 9.9 .9 on this one, All right? And I can go in here and go ahead and do an upgrade. Now what you see here is the upgrade itself, the image does not need to be hosted at the customer location. We host the images within CDO and the firewalls can go out and access that and install it. So it's just simplifying that entire process Greatly by pushing the image it. down from CDO. That is a real manager. <laughs> Correct. Correct. All right, excellent. But the last piece about doing upgrades is the ASA is a great technology called high availability. A lot of firewalls have that. Sure, you, know, sure. you have to have high availability in, in most environments. Agreed. But how do you manage the upgrades in that environment? Gets a little tricky. Go Gets ahead, a little tricky. Put one down, hold the other up, and things yeah. like that. All right. So again, simplicity. We go back up to my devices, and I know Minneapolis is running in an HA pair. Okay. So on the right hand side, failover mode is active standby. Right now, this host is the primary. I don't see a backup here, because in CDO, I know that the primary knows about who's backing him up. So as long as I can talk to the primary, then I don't need to worry about the upgrading or calling out the upgrade to the secondary. Right. So what this does is, if I click on the upgrade here, this will automatically upgrade the backup. It's not going to impact your network. I'm going to actually upgrade that, bring it back up and running, make sure it's good and green. Then I'm going to switch over the standby to now be the primary. Again, high availability. Right. We're still not impacting the network. And then I'll go ahead and upgrade the primary and then wash and repeat. We'll make sure it's good, and then bring that one back up. That sounds like, because I've done that before, that is a lot of manual stuff, and it's nerve-wracking, by the way. So very nice to just say, 
hey, go take care of it. Yep, <laughs> CDO will do the whole thing for you. Yeah, we... And what happens is if I upgrade the backup and I brick it for some reason, it happens once in a while, worst case, right? Maybe I turn that into a big brick. Mm -hmm. I will not touch the primary until I know that the secondary is ready to go. That's very simple. I love the way that it's controlling all of that and taking the manual process out of it and a lot of the problems that can come, especially if you try to cut corners and not do backups. <laughs> It happens, right? But now this has kind of forced you yeah. into a great way, a seamless way to do it. So this is a lot of great stuff, a lot of great com com configuration auditing that I, I haven't seen before. I love that we're doing that because that's so helpful to people who have these huge firewall lists and, and rules that they don't want to touch that house of cards. Yep. But um, uh, also being able to actually configure and enforce the policy across thousands of devices uh, that's the kind of scalability you get when you're in a cloud-based solution. Exactly. So you've got the cloud scalability, the policy configuration, uh, the object configuration, and the auditing of both of those. Exactly. And then the uh, device management. Yep. All right. You got it. That's a good amount of stuff, and I'd love to see, uh, have you back here on the show in a... I don't know, in the future, when we have some more news about what CDO has next in store for it, because I know it's going to be a bright future, like I said. Looking forward to it. Thanks for coming, man. Thank you. All right, if you want to check out a little bit more about Cisco Defense Orchestrator, CDO, check out the web link down below at your screen, and tune in next time for another episode of ThreatWise TV, and we will see you then. All right. Yeah, thanks so much for coming.